So we'll start to eat. Bedroom voice. <laughs> okay, I, okay, I'll introduce the team first before I introduce myself, if you don't mind. So, I beg the indulgence. so Anna is the youngest member of the team. Anna is the company secretary. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How are you doing? Is she Anna? We have she is single for now. <laughs> How are you doing? Is uh, Solar Tech. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. The maybe is uh, the individual responsible for this area, which is our salesperson. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> and Kazim, we call him Dr. Kaz, is our other solar tech as well. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. And my name is Christopher Wassa, and I'm the president of the UPS Renewable Energy. Oh. A little bit about our company, and then I'll tell you a little bit about myself as well. I live in the US. I've been there since 1982. I came to visit in 2012 and I couldn't see generator noise. So in my mind, I'm like, how can I solve this problem? And you saw there's a waste component to the business. I mean, there's something Nigeria has in abundance of waste. So I'm like, okay, I'm this genius. Let me move waste to generate power and solve Nigeria's power problem. Right? So that didn't go too far. So I still had the same problem. I couldn't yeah. sleep at night. I need to solve this problem. Um, so, like, you know, if there's anything Nigeria has in abundance, it's sun. And if you guys are, um, like, are you going to do this presentation? So, so listen and listen. Mm -hmm. It's been a very interesting experience. Mm -hmm. You're convinced when you come to visit Nigeria that the sun shines 24 hours a day. Thank you. Well, when you have solar, you find that the sun doesn't shine 24 hours a day. You go to three days with no sunshine. And so, Tonya and I have this conversation all the time. Um, our company was incorporated mm. in Jersey in 2015 and in Nigeria in 2014. Uh, a little bit about two of the principals of the company, myself and one of them, uh, got NAPSEP certified training. It's the governing board that manages solar installers in the US. And we also took um, an upgrade battery building systems course at this University in New York. We have a philosophy that's quite interesting relative to solar. And before I do that, let me show you something. The men are wearing the same size shirt. <coughs> okay, they're large, but as you can see, mine is a little tighter. Uh, Mr. Kaz is more free flowing and the fit carries the perfect one. And I do, everybody believes that when I'm going to present a solution to you, it has to be a one size fit all. It doesn't always work that way. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit all. But one last thing I want to show you is that when you see these lines there, it was in the 1988 model. My mother has been using it for that time. It still runs. I don't know how old everyone is here, but does anyone remember a car called the Beowulf Racer? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. You remember yeah, when it came out? Right? Yeah. 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 It didn't have a candidate. It was, uh, it was, when it came out, it was a wonderful product. Right? Everybody bought it, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody was promoting it. I'd come to visit, I'd come to visit one of the times, and my brother was like, Rasa Dawu, Rasa Dawu, we have to buy that car. Well, how many of them do you see on the road today? It's almost 30 years old. Yeah, again, it's 30 years old. That's the kind of solution we Nigeria, we've changed things and not necessarily for the better. We believe that in order to get where we need to be, price, we sacrifice policy in the name of price. And at the end of the day, that sacrifice you make winds up costing you two to three times more if you don't arrive the cost. So what we offer, we offer premium quality solar at about the price our competitors offer the system. What is it that makes us different? Everybody has my number as a president. And we set up discussion groups for each client so that they can reach us whenever they need us. It doesn't matter. So don't even tell you. It's called me at 3 o'clock in the morning US time and I answer it. this is actually. So there has been our customer since uh, February of 2000. 2015. He was our customer in Sulu area, and when he moved in here, he moved to us. And I would actually like him to tell his story because it's better hearing from someone who actually uses it than from someone who uses it. Yeah, I'm on to my part is done. So I guess you can have two minutes tell him a little bit about the experience, and then I'll open you up to questions. Well, I've been here since February. I've been here since February this year. 
When you do a battery based system, the critical part is being able to charge your batteries. The amount of you have still like it. Does your charge control look anything like this? With the exception of the smaller. So this is a 60, no, this is an 80 amp charge controller. This is the tiniest one we sell, and it's a 30 amp charge controller. And this is about what you guys have. They sell you as a 60 amp controller. Okay? So why would you buy this one? That's just that one. Are you guys? Are you in the mood for a real technical exercise? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you have two kilowatts in panels installed, right? That's an example, right? Your system, when it goes to charge your battery, starts with your battery voltage. That's what it looks at. It looks at your battery voltage, and then it looks at the current, which is the amps coming from the panels. And it multiplies that number. 
The type controllers which I see you guys by those little black ones with the screen, that what we call a PWM controller. So it sees 10 amps coming, it sees 23 volts at the batteries, 10 times 23 is what, 230, right? But you have to you have 2,000 watts in panel. It's happening you're only making 230, right? Well, this is what we call these are what we call MPT charge controllers. It looks at the same 23 volts. It sees the same 10 amps coming in, right? But guess what it does? It steps down the voltage because we have higher voltage and then boosts that current, which is the amp. So now, that your 10 amps is suddenly 20 or 25 amps. Multiply that number by your 23 volts, we're now 460, right? So think about as a funnel. I give you a small size funnel and tell it to fill a huge bucket, right? It will take you a while. But if I give you a bigger funnel and tell it to fill the same bucket, it will take you a shorter time, right? That's the difference. That's why you see performance issues when you purchase those controllers relative to the so so that's an example of one. The second example we use, um, and Sotonia is going to do an upgrade, is the inverters we use. When I started this business, I bought quite a lot from China. And we spent the first six months replacing them at my kit. The most expensive one I did was an inverter that cost me $2,500 and I spent $1,000 to bring it to replace an inverter for a customer. Why did I have to replace those inverters? Your battery needs to be properly charged, it's one. Secondly, there has to be a low, proper low voltage cutoff for your battery. The reason why your batteries fail, one, you don't buy extremely good quality batteries, but number two, you over discharge them. Each time you over discharge a battery, you shorten the cycle life. The battery has is like us, you could live to 75 years, and if you over 75 years, it's Jara, right? Well, the battery only has, the lower end has 300 to 400, the higher end has over 1,500. Each time you deplete the battery below 50%, that's what? The cycle life. So the cutoffs on those inverters are below zero. So what that means is you are stressing those batteries. That's the reason why those of you in this room who have inverters, you notice you replace your batteries every two, two and a half years, and you think that's normal. No, it's not normal. Batteries are supposed to last five to seven years at the minimum, and the higher end batteries are supposed to last to ten years. Okay? You need an inverter that the cutoff is much higher than zero. We set, I set my cutoff at 50%. Once it gets 50%, my inverter beeps, and I have to change the behavior. What behavior do I change? I either turn the freezer off or I turn the fridge off. Sorry, I turn the fridge off. Okay, when I do that, the voltage comes back up till the sun comes back. Does that make sense? So, I'm not that good, so please, I expect questions. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Do you mind the raise hands? Yes. Uh, we recognize that it's been a challenge for us as well. Okay. As of right now, we don't do anything. We are talking to a couple of banks to see if they're willing to finance our customers. So. Let me digress a bit. We've spent so much time on the product side that we finally are beginning to work on the sales side of the equation. So we have roughly about 50 installations out there in Nigeria. Uh, our biggest customer is Gilat. We did 10 systems to one. It's a very, very big question and it's a very, very valuable one. What Sotoya did is Sotoya did his own period of time. He didn't do everything at once. He made the critical purchase which was the inverter and the batteries. And then instead of adding, instead of doing add-ons. That's an option. The beautiful thing about solar is you could increase capacity, correct, right, scalable. That's thank you. So that's the beautiful thing about solar. You don't have to do everything at once, you could do it a period of time. But we definitely are going to visit the issue of finance because it's, in this economy it's a very, very big concern. Did I answer your question? Yes. How about you? Now I want to ask concerning this 50% charge for the battery. Are you saying the voltage will come as low as 6 volts? No, That's if you see 6 volts on a 12 volt battery, that battery is, is destroyed. So 50% on a, on a 12 volt battery is 12.1 12 12 volts. Volt. So let's, let's visit batteries real quick. So that when it's up, just two minutes. 12.1 volts. Okay. Alright, so let, let's... 
you mind, let me let me let, let me add some some extra to this. So you have a 24 volt system or a 12 volt. Let's use 12 volts and then just multiply by two if you have 24 volts, or let's multiply by four if you have 48 volts, right? So people assume that at 12 volts the batteries are fully charged, right? Okay. That is incorrect. Can we say it now? Uh, we just all we brought them is for the introduction. Right. They are not in a haste to go. No. Okay, so if you, you have any teams, personal thing now, please let's see them. We just need okay, to introduce you because there are other things. People are going. We don't want them to we go into uh, Please, we will. We, we can. We will see them. Please. Thank you. So we are standing around. Uh, just we'll be standing the here so that you can see them. Time. It's not past, it's it's because, uh, you know, you want to hand up then you can face uh, them. We can face them after. Let's just hand up, we can still not face okay. them. So please, uh, to end up, uh, we will.